which is the only thing changing in this particular resolution for one of the family uh, residential, and it's based on square footage rather than on value. So we have no choice around this. It has to be. We, we need to, to, we need to, to buy for the something, yes. Uh, and it, it would need to cover our costs from the third party service that we use, which this would do. Motion for six. What page are those on? Six. Six. Uh, item six. No, no, no. The page. Uh, the change. What page is it on? What page is the change on, uh, Cody? I'm sorry. She's asking what page is the change on? Uh, So it would be page seven, Linda. At the top, it says garbage rates. That's the page that it starts. With. services the Homewood Place subdivision as well as the Tex Best Travel Center. Um, after meetings with the River Authority, it became clear that the River Authority wanted to discontinue that plan um, and uh, had indicated that what they eventually wanted to do would, was to construct a lift station to redirect the wastewater from that plant down to the new plant that's over on that would be built on Dickey Clay. Um, they uh, one, one of the issues though that uh, came up was that um, the River Authority, uh, when DR had approached them, the River Authority wanted the connection fees. They, they require the connection fees up front rather than uh, by unit. So it was going to mean that uh, uh, D.R. Horton would end up having to front roughly $810,000 to the River Authority uh, in order to get the plat approved. Those are, like I say, for them it's paid on, on plat uh, approval. Um, to keep things moving with, to make sure that the development didn't stall since the River Authority had wanted to get out uh, from under that plant, I approached the River Authority to um, find out if they would be willing to deed the plant over to us. 
um, because basically at, at that point we could uh, uh, run the plant. Um, we already have uh, licensed and experienced wastewater operator with uh, Stephen Mayfield. And um, it would open up possibilities of us uh, uh, growing more in the sewer field in the future. Um, Sarah did express interest in doing this. They have sent over basically a bullet point list of things that they would require in order to turn the facility over to us. Um, one of the main things is they would be requiring a payment of $150,000. The, the thoughts on this is essentially, and this would be included in the development, developers agreement uh, with DR is that the DR Horton would pay that $150,000 up front and that would be a credit to the uh, connection fees that they would have to pay us over here but it would be that, that would be the amount they would pay up front rather than the $810,000 and they would pay us connection fees over time as, as houses were built and they actually uh, were connected to the system. Um, we have had uh, a third party engineer that specializes in, in wastewater facilities inspect the plant. Uh, I did provide that to you uh, this evening. We've got a, a summary from uh, Hearn Engineering um, that uh, they, they went out and inspected the plant along with myself, Gary Montgomery. Uh, it can get more into the technical side of things. But uh, they have, uh, the Sara facility has a, what we would essentially consider a Cadillac version of, the SCADA, of a SCADA system. Uh, basically has all the bells and whistles that you would want for remote monitoring of a wastewater plant. Uh, they have a fairly new, uh, rather large generator that's uh, that would have uh, probably some significant value, as well as uh, some pumps, particularly over at their lift station near Texbest, uh, with one pump valued probably about 35,000. So there is uh, some considerable value there. The, the engineer that, uh, that uh, we have to look at it basically is saying that there's nothing that he has seen that uh, would make him shy away from this deal. Uh, there are some maintenance issues that will have to be done over time. Uh, there is some interior uh, coating that would need to be reapplied uh, at some point uh, in the future, uh, which can run, my understanding is run somewhere in the ten to $15,000 range uh, for the, the basin that was that is in need of it. The, uh, the motors as well, um, there's uh, some, uh, possibly some issues with one or two of them, uh, but if those go out, the, the amount to uh, repair uh, would not be uh, significant um, to, to this deal. One thing to keep in mind is that uh, the, San, the River Authority will be keeping any type of connection fees that they have up to this point, which uh, as they, as they uh, require the collection of those fees on platting, they've already collected the fees up front for home place uh, unit three that was recently approved. So they already have that money. Um, but the uh, Units four, uh, units four and five of Homewood Place, when they come online, those connection fees would come to us and be calculated. If we keep the fees the same, which is what I would recommend to make this as seamless as possible for the current customer base, <coughs> leave the fees the same as what Sarah charges uh, so that uh, the, the citizens don't feel any, any negative impact. But what were we? 
the same. So if you kept your fees the same, Homewood Unit 4 and 5 would pay 386000 in fees <coughs> and, uh, whenever they come online. And so those fees, those connection fees, with my way of thinking would be able to be essentially put away in uh, a fund at, in the bank to be able to uh, pay for any maintenance in the future uh, for some time to come, but we wouldn't need those fees for the uh, daily operation of the facility. And the expansion. And the expansion. Do you want to go into some so details? So the plant that's on the ground today is 90,000 gallons a day. They have a permit for no, that's, uh, that's the one over here, right? 181. Okay. Yeah, between Cassiano and 181. This is our home today. It's a 90,000 gallon per day plan. The permit is 150,000 gallons per day. So at some point in the future, you could expand. The plant's running about 40% capacity right now. So that's a good time to take care of the coating and different things because you can take that basin out offline, clean it, coat it, and then you're back in service. Uh, but at some point in the future, these fees that are being paid, you'll have to use uh, some of them to expand. The other thing that that does, uh, Sarah has, uh, San Antonio River Authority has uh, written a letter that says there is adequate capacity to serve the first 300 homes in uh, what is now Hickory Ridge Ranch of Um One of the things about that is uh, if there's that capacity and we build the plant at uh, what was the Ranch Film or Hickory Ridge? Uh, if we build that plant and take those 300 lots to that plant, that opens up 300 lots capacity in this uh, the existing package plant. So that allows for growth in that corridor. At some point in the future, you may elect to just take this package plant offline and take everything to a, to one central plant, but you wouldn't have to. You have an active permit. The plant actually sets on a lease. Uh, easement or it sets on an easement through uh, CPS. It's on CPS's property. Five. And it's a little over five acres of easement, um, and we're working through that to make sure everything's transferable. And CPS has no problem with the, the city taking that over if you choose to do that. Uh, we haven't found anything that scares us off. Uh, you have a willing developer that will pay your upfront cost. You have a willing developer that will continue to pay fees into the system for operation and maintenance. Uh, it's a growing system. Right now, there's somewhere between 60 and 70 homes on the, in the system. Uh, you just approved a plat a month or two ago for unit three that's 77 lots, so the system's growing. Uh, that was one of the things. Uh, the plant was put on the ground in 2005. Uh, as we all know, the recession hit. There wasn't very many houses going on in eight, 2008, 9, and 10. Uh, so it was a bad time for Sarah. They had a plant on the ground with very few homes on it. So it, it didn't make money. Uh, but the, that's, that's in the past. The system's growing. You have more ratepayers coming on. And uh, you can't buy this plant anywhere else and move it and get a site. It, it's operating. It's putting out good water quality. Uh, I did some research on the TC2 database. I haven't found any violations to their permit, uh, no exceedances to their permit. The plant's running fine. The second part of that is an interlocal agreement that says uh, if Elmendorf needs it, Sarah will come and help operate it. They'll, they, there could be a, a period in there that both operators are there. Stephen would be there and Sarah would be there. He, Stephen has been out to the plant several times just making the daily rounds with Sarah just to get familiar with the plant, see if there's any uh, anything that uh, he notices that needs to be fixed. Um, but I think the plant's running fine. Um, as far as operation, there may be some tweaks that need to be done here and there just to make it a little more efficient. Um, it also comes with the lift station that's behind TextFest that was developer um, constructed. It's all been approved by Sarah, all the lines have been approved by Sarah, and the system's running. Steve, you, don't, you haven't seen old or seen issues on this this place at all. It looks pretty 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 decent. Other than a little paint and stuff like that, nothing. And I can I think one comment on sure that should be converted. We should be careful for the fact that Stephen has those licenses, licenses yeah. to run the facility as needed. 
No, that, that's a great comment because if, if you were sitting in this position and you didn't have an operator, then you have to bring on more staff, it's more operating expense. Uh, you can run the system pretty slim right now and, and make it work. And, and in anticipation of this, um, in a, you know, the, Mr. Mayfield is ready to go uh, for this, but as well, we're setting up classes for the other water operators that we have so that they can become licensed as well. So, you know, if God forbid something happens, we're not, we're not left without. We're having to, to uh, hire specifically for this one position. And that's the benefit of the interlocal agreement also. If Stephen were, you know, if he needed to take off for a week or went on vacation for a week, you could call Sarah and say, I need you to fill in for a week while staff is out. If, if it just comes up that there's somebody needs to cover a day, that interlocal agreement basically says that if you call Sarah Lloyd. Yeah, it's the, the ILA is not mandatory that it be, that we, that we use it or, or pay for it on an annual basis. It's basically pay as you go and use as you need. But basically they just wanted an agreement that says if you call, you're going to pay or, you know, if we have to drive down there, you're going to pay our fee. Yeah. Um, yes. You said the connection fees were already paid to Sarah. Are you getting that money from them? No, the fees that, that, that have already been paid to Sarah for Unit 3, Sarah's going to keep. So uh, so those fees have already been So been you paid. have to provide them service, but, but you're not getting any. No, okay. we'll, we'll get the, the fees that we would get would be off of Units 4 and 5 of Homewood. Um, as well as the fees from phase one of the DR uh, facility. And what he's talking about is the connection fees, but you still would have your monthly uh, bill service oh, for each yes. house coming in. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. still yeah. have that for your your You'll get, so the well, whatever's in the future will go to you. So oh, yeah, the, sure. yeah. Yeah. the monthly fees, right. yes, they would, they would come to us. We actually already bill for the sewer service provided by Sarah, it comes on the, the water bill on, uh, every month. So the, the people that are already on the sewer system aren't going to really see any change because they're already paying us. We, uh, we withhold 3% of those fees to cover the administrative uh, costs of handling the bills and handling the money and transferring it back to Sarah. But uh, at that point that we close on this, then the, then the monthly fees the rate payers pay would be collected and kept by the city. So there's not a big amount of money that Sarah walked with that you got to make up. No, this has been a losing situation for Sarah for many years. So are you saying Sarah is willing to sell the lift for 150000 Basically, yes. all of their collection infrastructure, all of the treatment plant, and the lift station, the whole, they they will walk away. Well, that's a bargain. It is. <laughs> and we're not paying the 150. Right. Oh, exactly. Yeah, you have your own It's a and, and, and that would be, that would be the condition is that, yes, we move forward. Um, Y'all would authorize uh, Mike and myself and Gary to, uh, to, to, you know, come up with the actual final agreement with Sarah. This would just essentially be agreed to the bullet points that uh, what Sarah is asking for, as well as uh, approving the analytical agreement. This this would still end up coming back to y'all for a final for a final approval uh, after the agreement is done. But we would condition it and we'd condition the agreement uh, that we wouldn't close on the plant until such time as DR has has paid 150. Yeah. And one more thing, the I think the phase three that you said that that Sarah would keep that connection piece, that's already all been put in there, right? No. Has all those lines been connected? No, they have. No, oh, not okay. yet. Okay. Not yet. They're they're clearing. They the contractor has begun clearing the property. Okay. But they'll be putting in the sewer lines and, and connecting those in, and Sarah would be inspecting those okay. uh, as well as and Sarah has been very good through this whole process. They've been very open and honest with everything. The operator that met with us last Thursday was very open 
he told us what he thought needed to change and what he liked, what he didn't like. Most of them were just operator type uh, comments. Uh, but Sarah has been very good to work with. And I think they'll continue to be that. Um, they're focusing on another part of their service area, and I think that's the big draw to, to move away from this. Plus, with Elmendorf going in to the, the bigger subdivision, they don't see a lot of growth potential for their plant, so I think it was a good opportunity for the developer of the city and Sarah to do what they wanted to do. And make their own happy. Right. Yep. All right. Is there a motion for number seven? Do you have a question? Yeah. Oh, wait, wait. The sewer system, you talk about fees and fees. What, what fees are you for the residential themselves or the business? Or that, that would definitely be the next step of the, the, of, of the puzzle is if, if y'all want to move forward with this, then probably next month we can have the, the fee resolution back on the agenda to add in the sewer fees. And my recommendation to council is basically going to be to adopt the same rates that Sarah charges right now so that there's no no change in no change to the the end user to the customer to the citizen. This, and the big question: Would you know what the individual rates are for per household? So for a connection fee is twenty seven hundred dollars. That's when you tie onto the system. It's right. a one time fee. And then I'm not sure about the monthly rate. Um, um, it's based off your I've, 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 I've got their rate schedule in my office, but nope, I don't have the actual rates here. Um, but they base it off of, if it's a new connection, it's a flat fee. If it's an uh, existing connection, they base it off of a winter time average. And when you say a connection fee, is it already connected? Or is it just basically that you access it or? It's not connected today because these are all future developments. Right. So they're building right. new lines and then a home builder comes in, builds the house and makes the actual connection. Right. Okay. So the other thing, uh, so, the, the $2,700, that's all the same. The, the big benefit to DR Horton, which whenever we ran this by him and said, hey, would you be willing to put up $150,000 to make this deal fly? They said, sure, because I was going to write an $810,000 check to Sarah. So now they get to pay as they connect. The money's the same, it's just spread out over time. Right. It's not costing them any more, they just get to keep their check for a while and yep. pay it out. And so the system's whole is put as far as financing, it's just there is a benefit to not writing an $810,000 check for your Go ahead, George. The connection fees are already paid, then that's just the ones over there are costing out. Correct. So right. Nothing with the no, 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 nothing right down there. Okay. Right. That's for the whole city of Alabama. Okay. The only ones that have sewer right now over there on the Yes, the ones that have the sewer where Butterfield is at. Mm -hmm. And then whoever, else, whatever other units are coming online, will turn around and come to us. If you have septic, you're not going to pay that fee. Yeah. You know, if you have septic, so you're not going to pay that fee. No, that's not to say. That's not. That's well, not to say that in the future, because if we if we go the route that, that Gary was talking about, where once everything's said and done, we re, we redirect the the first 300 homes of Hickory Ridge back to the main plan which frees up the 300 homes over here on the 181 plan, that can either be for additional growth on that side of town, or if, if a council ends up wanting to try to expand sewer service, if that's something the council wants to do into the existing city. I, I mean, it's an expensive venture to, to run the line. It's, it's something that can be done, but the option is there to grow if council chooses to. Yeah. Luckily in this system you don't have a huge debt service that you have to go out and try to entice people to catch. Yeah. Come on. You're really at a net zero. You're providing a service. You're allowing development to happen, but it's not really costing and it's not costing the existing ratepayers anything. Yeah. Correct. All right. So I uh, I would recommend number seven. Bless you, sir. I would recommend number seven. So with that being said, is there a motion for seven? I make a motion to acquire uh, for uh, to acquire the 181 waste water treatment plant owned by the San Antonio River Authority and approval of an interlock 
interlocal agreements between the San Antonio River Authority and the City of Elmendorf for technical assistance and support for the City of Elmendorf sanitary sewer treatment and collections. Second. And the manual seconds. All in favor? Uh, all five. <laughs> Item number eight, discussing possible action regarding an interlocal agreement with Bear County for the provision of a high water detection system on Schultz Road. Uh, we've been discussing with the, uh, with the county. They, they have an initiative where they're uh, trying to go through uh, both the whole county, including suburban cities, to identify areas that are flood prone and in need of any high water detection. Uh, systems. Uh, Schultz Road, as most of you probably know, we get any significant rainfall floods quite uh, quite a bit. Um, a couple of times a year, on, at least, um, our, our crews or our police department, depending on the timing, are out putting up barricades uh, on the road to prevent cars from driving through the, the, the high water. Um, the county is agreeable to installing uh, a high water detection system there on Schultz Road, which includes the automatic barricades that come down when the flood waters reach a certain level. Mm -hmm. um, operate similar to like the train arms there on 327. Um, it would be done uh, completely at the county's expense. Uh, once that, once it's completed, though, ongoing operations, uh, any maintenance the issues that may arise with it uh, down the road would be on the city. But all the upfront costs for construction would be handled by the county, um, and they would be looking to start construction in September of this year. Ms. Water? Okay, yeah, I totally agree. I live right on Schultz Road, and I mean, it is horrible. My property is at the very end of all that runoff, and we get all the trash, and I noticed that some of the maintenance people had put uh, wrap in some of the dugout areas, and all that just washes in on our property. I was wondering if, and my husband, if a ditch could be put in. Now, back in 89 or 90, no, 98, uh, CBDG had granted money for all the drainage to be done, and the city had approved that all the drainage would be done before the streets would be fixed. Well, Schultz Road never got anything. We had uh, agreed to let them come in on our property and take up some of it to make a ditch, but nothing ever happened. Yeah. And so we're wondering, you know, why can't something like that be done? Because just Putting up markers and barricades, I mean, that's not going to fix the problem. It won't, it won't, it won't fix the problem. Um, it, it'll help in the interim, no doubt. Uh, and the question of what to do about Schultz Road and, and that property, that, that ends up being a council decision. Yeah. Uh, and a budgetary one. The, the amount of money that it would take to create a proper drainage uh, ditch and and channel down Schultz Road be probably pretty significant. But can't you go to uh, the CDBG it, to get funding for that? Like before? Well, whenever I can't I can't speak to what they did before because whenever they went for the CDBG funds, I know they did drainage uh, in other parts of the city, mm -hmm. and they directed it all to essentially one area as one outflow area, which basically points straight to Schultz Road. Mm -hmm. um, and that was never followed through on, on the rest of the drainage. They did some streets and so forth. CDBG right now is kind of out of, the, out of, the, out of our reach at the moment because we no longer qualify for CDBG funds because we no longer qualify as a uh, meet the low income requirements. For the community, so that that essentially puts the the onus back on council of determining when to spend the money to upgrade the drainage there, or 
how much we were able to go into debt and so forth to get it done without the CDBG funds. Um, but that really is 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 come on on their shoulders. Yeah, even with maybe just having at some time maintenance, being able getting permission from the homeowners first of all to make a ditch through there coming in on the properties because all of us get flooded. No. But like I said, my husband and my property is the one that gets the big brunt of it. You know, it's the, just the like, biggest problem with that. And, and whenever I first came on board here, that's one of my initial thoughts too. Is well, why don't we just you know do a little ditch and, and, and cut it ourselves? The problem comes in is that if we start messing with the flow of water without a fully engineered plan, and whatever we do may fix most of the problem, but what if something we did actually flows more water onto someone else's property? And because we hadn't done the whole thing right from the get-go, it makes the city liable for any damages that, that are done in, in that case. It sounds easy to just cut a ditch, but unfortunately all of it has to be surveyed and engineered. Yeah. Gary can probably speak to that better than I can. Well, we looked at that a few years ago, too. We uh, actually uh, had a discussion on it, too. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, I remember doing uh, the cost estimates and exhibits for that. But, that but what is it like years. if we just gave uh, permission off of our property where it's already like naturally ditched yeah. out? And to run under 1604, and then so it goes to the river. If you know, we just gave permission for you to go ahead and go on our property and finish digging deeper to run correctly the, instead of, you know, then you don't have to mess with the other neighbors. The side that we would need to come down, there's actually a phone line on that side, too. That's why we've never cut more than what we have there right at the edge of the road. Yeah. They said that was dead, all that phone line was dead. Yeah, I am. Mean, I'm not trying to, this is outside of what we're on the agenda and we're having discussions, so this is actually a proper okay. event, so we need to keep it to what's actually on the agenda. Okay. I apologize. All right. Yes, it's, yes. it's actually very good. Yeah. Uh, I, under, I understand your concerns, whatever. We, we actually talked about it uh, not too long ago, Cody and I, and it, it is it is a concern that needs to get taken care of, and we'll, we'll, we'll look into it. Uh, as far as that high water detection system, I think I was the one that sent you the email because it was originally sent to me by myself. And right away, the second I saw it, I emailed Cody with it. And I, I think it is a very good thing to put in. If you, if, no matter what, if you save one life from crossing through there, it did its job. Uh, God forbid anybody here in, this, in, in our town where you know go to cross that thing or whatever, somebody perish or something. I don't even want to see that. And okay, you need more one. proof on my computer right now to report today. I have a video of uh, one of our officers sitting there in a car driving around the barricade creeping along at about three miles an hour through the hole um, with the water flowing over and the officer when he got to the other side asked him and he said, well, it was a shortcut. He <laughs> said, the water, he drove around, so if you need any more motivation, I've got that video. And that's when there was a barricade. Yeah, there was a barricade. He drove around. Putting in a barricade and they got stolen by the night since. <laughs> wow. So I, I recommend, yes, I recommend we, we, we pass the tape there. But is there another entrance for that one property that's right at where you would put the barricade up at the curb? I don't know. I, yeah, I, I have no idea. No. No, no sir. I don't think so. Now when they're able to get in and out. Yeah, they can yeah. literally, there's a river across their highway, under their driveway to where they're, they're, okay. they can not get out. I've actually driven by this through through several years of when it gets flooded and yeah, they they might get to the road. Anyway. Yeah, that's right. that lady we talked to. Uh, is there a motion for a I'd like to make the motion that we approve an interlocal agreement with Bear County for the provision of a high water detection system on the Schultz Road. Second. I second. Value of seconds. All in favor? All five. 
Item number nine, discuss possible action regarding city ordinance regulating the placement of signs. That one I'm going to go to Mr. Mike. Okay. So, um, I read over it. I agree with it 100%. Okay. Cody and the, and the mayor has had some discussions, uh, particularly I think it was brought up with regard to uh, the election process and where to put signs. And the way that our ordinance read, which was absolutely with inside state law, we were absolutely compliant. But it gives cities the authority to decide regarding the placement of signs in our right of way. Now, this does not include county right of way or state right of way. I want to make that clear that this is only for, for city right of way. So it uh, would not apply to 327 or 1604 or uh, any of the bigger roads. So just understand that. Uh, but so what, what I decided to do after listening to their comments was we basically cut out, and I think the version y'all have is the one that's the red line, uh, <coughs> cut out the political signs in uh, the basic sign requirement and I created, uh, well, before that, um, that it, it said signs are not permitted, permitted in the right of way, so I added the language except as otherwise provided in this division, and that's what we call it, that's the division in the ordinance. So to open that up, and then I added a section regarding the political signs which just very simply states that uh, political signs are allowed in the public right away between 90 days before and five days after an election. Very simple. Um, we talked about doing some different language with regard to just local elections, but then that would be uh, prohibiting or putting restrictions based on content versus local, state, federal. Yes, and so that could get us in trouble. And so obviously there's November elections and May elections, so instead of trying to pick dates, um, just said 90 and 5, just and yep. uh, just make it that clean. And uh, I, I thought about putting some other restrictions and requirements in there, making it look more like banded signs on there. But you know, I just figured that we'll just we'll just let it go. If somebody wants to put a um, an eight by six sign, you know, for somebody in their front yard. I mean, foot. I guess they can do it. Um, so that's what, that's what we'll do. So is it proper um, to have it that it says placing of signs just rather than say political signs? No, no, because we, we amended the, band, the definition of abandoned signs as well, and oh, okay. where they could be, and then, uh, like I said, we also <laughs> made a blanket exception for uh, the division with for um, right away for any signs, which in this case includes both banded and political. And this, this is really just kind of a preliminary item to right. gauge council's feel on it with recommendations we've come up with. Uh, based on any feedback you have, uh, the final uh, ordinance would be drafted and it would be back for final approval on the July agenda. Our main thing from the city staff perspective is we don't really want to have uh, those mobile homes. We don't want to have anything to do with local politics. We want to try to stay out of it. We don't want to have to pick up one person's sign and not the other or whatever. We we uh, we don't want to appear biased in any way. Uh, and, and so that's that's part of this this deal. And as far as those two, like getting those little signs that pop up all of a sudden from mobile homes and Great Deal. Those banded signs would still be uh, outlawed during certain times of the week. Bandit signs are allowed uh, Thursday, five Thursday, five Thursday at 5 o'clock till Monday at 8 a.m. That allows people to have garage sale signs and that kind of thing. Right. But any other time we can go out and, and pull okay. those two. Yeah. What, you keep saying banded signs? What, what do you mean? So, so they call them banded signs because they're not permitted or anything. And the reason why you don't permit them because it would be such a pain for you to come and permit so have a, a garage sale. And, it, and it's actually uh, kind of, a, I, I guess, amusing. But uh, in Cedar Park, they're allowed to be up for the weekend. And you'll see 8 o'clock Monday morning the Cedar Park truck driving around. He's pulling up all the signs. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. Basically, any sign, you know, okay. anything you see, like, you know, we buy ugly homes, yeah. you know, okay. those, those yeah. types of signs. So, no, if it's on private property, it's fine. This is. This is just city right away. City right away. And, and so, this in a way, if it's there out of the times, the city employees pull them out? Can, yeah. Oh. Yes, we can. Well, let me ask you this. Let's say. Okay, 
I feel like if you put a political sign up, once the election's done, it's your responsibility to go take them all up. So let me ask you this. Is there anything we can do to say, you know, if you don't take, and, and the same with garage sale signs too. Is there anything to say, you know, you need to take your sign up, if not, we're gonna find you, or is that just, is that just too much work? You can, the problem is, is you don't necessarily, even though it may be a candidate, the candidate may not be the person to put it there. So basically what you're doing is you're losing your sign. And I don't know how much it works in Elmendorf, but I've recently purchased a bunch of those. They're not exactly cheap. So you don't want to, you don't want to have to throw them away <laughs> yeah. okay. Okay. if you can help it. So, um, yeah. Thank you. Uh, I recommend that we also uh, approve member nine. Is there a motion? Mm -hmm. I, I have to go ahead, go ahead. Where's over the 90 days from? So that's three months in advance. Mm -hmm. So the so just just take the May election. So the, it's the first weekend in May. So it's the first Saturday in May. The deadline to file for the city is usually at the beginning or kind of the mid mid February. So it's actually less time than that. Uh, but it gets you close enough to that because uh, we originally thought about data filing through the date of the election. But um, I mean we can do it that way. That's up to y'all. I just thought this was cleaner. Um, Makes it more simple. It is. It's, 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 you're you're simplifying it. That's what that was the goal. Right. Because at first when I started drafting it, and I told Cody and the mayor in the email, it just got really complicated. And I was like, you know what? Let's just do this and see how the council feels about right. it. Yeah. If they decide they want to get in the weeds and you know decide it's a full moon following the vernal <laughs> equinox, then you have to take it down. Then we'll let y'all decide that. <laughs> is there a motion for not? I make a motion for the city of Orleans relating the place of the sign. Second. Linda <coughs> seconds. All in favor? Uh, so five. just to be clear, so the language presented to you, you want us to bring us back in an ordinance? Yes. Sir. Okay. Just to be clear. 100% we're in July. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Item number 10, discuss a possible action regarding the potential auction of unneeded or non-operational assets, including the motor grader, 2006 Crown Victoria, and a 1990 GMC dog truck. Council and Mayor, I'm going to let uh, Mr. Bayfield handle that. That's why he's here today. Uh, Before he speaks, I saw all of them and they need to go. <laughs> uh, first off, the motor grader has uh, a bad transmission, hasn't worked since I've been here. Uh, we've uh, recently, we've, since then, we bought an attachment for the John Deere to do the same job. Uh, the Crown Big uh, is just one of those things that no AC in it, no heater, nobody wants to drive it. Uh, I also heard at one point, I don't know if that was the car, that the gas tank was held up by wire. I think that was a It's not that I know. It's a fact. Well, there was a vehicle that had that, am I right? Yes. Yeah. It's just, it's just that's been a while. That's the, that's the old way of the world. That's right. And all statute of limitations are passed. Hey, anyone? Now we use duct tape. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you. 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 Two months later, the alternator go out, or you know, it's just a maintenance nightmare. That's the GM. It's a domino effect. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's let, a nineteen nineties. So. Let me just say that that is the very first vehicle that we brought for the city. So may it rest in peace. <laughs> <laughs> I make a motion for the museum. Donate. All right. Is there a motion for ten? Go ahead. So well, actually, the one thing that, oh, I'm sorry. So if we're, if we're getting, I mean, we decide to auction himself, are we going to need additional items to replace them, or are these just not in use and they're just sitting around? The uh, motor grader, the blade, has actually already been replaced. Um, we've already, the only thing that we would need to maybe replace would be the dog truck, but we have looked at uh, maybe getting a trailer that we can use with any truck. To, for you know, to have, have animals, uh, yeah, animals go out to do it. Type thing? Yeah. yeah, but 
actually make specialized trailers. I've seen kennel trailers for animal control, uh, which probably serve us a lot better than, than something that uh, I would agree. They don't have a time they've got to keep running. Yeah. But one of the things that we would that I, I would want direction from y'all is how you want it auctioned. I would recommend that we auction it. We can do it either one of two ways. We can either uh, hold the auction here, we can advertise it in the Wilson County News, uh, in the Express News, that we're having this auction. People can come out, look at the equipment, and bid on it in, by sealed bid. You know, we could have an auction date deadline. They could turn their bids into it in a sealed bid, and then on the date we open the bids and high bid gets it. We could do it that way, or the other way we can do it um, is our the tow company we, we work with, uh, All Tex Towing. They hold regular auctions uh, that are actually pretty well attended, um, and uh, we could at least for sure on the, the vehicles we could have them auction it for us. It's possible that they could generate more bids because there are more people that go to those type of auctions. Uh, it's, it's really a toss-up. Uh, they would, re they would uh, require uh, a fee, so the offset may come out and wash. I mean, we may have a higher bid with that company, but in the end, after their fee, it may, we may benefit and we would right. auction it here. So it's really kind of a toss-up that Whichever way council would like us to auction it, we'd be happy to do it. Do you think anybody would come out to bid on them? Dan um, Wallace. Oh, you'd be surprised. Dan Wallace. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we may have to go that route anyway for the track of the, the blade. Right, because you're not able to move it. So we can do it for one, we might as well do it for all. Why don't, we, why don't we try it that way first? And then if nothing happens, then we just go to all things over all. Well, I, I have a feeling we get at least one bid that may be a super low bid, you know. And you know, there's no, we can't, put a, we can't put a minimum on them at all. Can we set a minimum? Sure. A minimum starting bid? Yeah. You can start. You can have a starting bid. Yeah, you can set, you can set a minimum. Right. I mean, if we get a minimum, minimum. out of our hair anyway, they're, they're yeah. nice yeah. or anything. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to set a minimum. Yeah. I wasn't going to say five cents, yeah. you know. So they're the only ones that did, you know. Yeah. The, uh, I mean, the motor grader, it, it, obviously it doesn't run the transmissions, but the, the diesel on it's good. Okay. That's, I think that is actually worth some more money than, than you would think because it can be parted out. Uh, and uh, it's, like it's got a pretty strong diesel motor on it. So. With, with it, that fee that you would have to pay for them to it, is that a toll fee or is that just a yeah, they would probably charge us a tow fee. They would have to have a, uh, a tractor trailer to get that grader out of here. Yeah, right. and in fact, they, they had to tow an RV off of the property just uh, just earlier this week. What was the tow bill on it? 18? 18. 18. Uh, Woo! No, no. <laughs> Is that, that's the one they drug out on the kill off, right? Yes, it, it, was a, it was a job. Let me tell you. They Three uh, 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 I say we, that, I, my recommendation would be to try the option here first, right. and then, uh, yeah, whatever happens, happens. If, if not, then we go to all things. Fair enough. And, and set a minimum. Yeah. That we need the numbers. They fill the. Uh, Recommended minimum. I mean, the dog truck really is scrap. Uh, yeah, I wouldn't minimum. set it. I would. I would set a minimum of four to five hundred. If that. No, yeah, I, 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 would, I, would, I would say two hundred dog truck two to three hundred. Yeah, yeah. And on the Crown Big, uh, you know, somebody would love like that Crown Big at least for the engine. Right. Uh, so mm -hmm. I put that up there around those six eight hundred as a minimum start. Right. And then for the greater. Just pulling across the scales would get you probably more than I could tell you to take the low ball on it. <laughs> yeah. um, mm -hmm. I would say at least 1500 as a start. No, okay. no less. Well, let's go with 
that. And we'll see what happens. So 15 on the Federator. 300 on the motor trailer, 600 on the Crown Vic, 300 on the... 200 on the truck. 200 on the dog truck. Yeah. Not at all. Is, is, like, is the dog truck like a like a dog catcher truck? Yes. Okay. They've got not, not like the police truck. <laughs> no. All right. Motion for 10. Motion to have the auction here at the city of Elmendorf for the non-operational and unneeded equipment, <laughs> um, including the motor grader, at the minimum of fifteen hundred, the crown big at the minimum of six hundred, and the dog truck at the minimum of two hundred. Second. Second. Manual second. All in favor? Aye. All five. Motion to adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Time. <laughs> Who said motion first? Ms. Linda. In favor, second. All in favor? All five. I have 8.43 p.m.